In this section, we'll look at monarch pupae and adults, as well as the milkweed and nectar plants that make up quality monarch habitats. In all Lepidoptera, the pupa stage is immobile. Many moths form a cocoon around themselves before they pupate. Monarchs do not, I repeat, do not form cocoons. Cocoons are silken shelters that protect pupae, such as this Cecropia moth cocoon here. Most butterflies, including monarchs, rely on camouflage to make their naked pupa inconspicuous. If you've ever tried to find a monarch pupa in the wild, you know how effective this camouflage is. Monarchs rarely pupate on milkweed. Instead, they crawl up to several meters to find a pupation spot. When they find a spot, they make a small silk pad using a gland on their head, and then hang upside down by their last pair of prolegs in a J shape. In a day or so, they molt again, exposing the bright green monarch chrysalis. For the next eight to 15 days, the adult monarch develops. While the process of metamorphosis looks like four distinct stages, by the time larvae pupate, major changes towards the adult form have already occurred. One of the last changes to occur in the butterfly pupa is the formation and pigmentation of the scales. During the day preceding adult emergence, this process is completed and the scales become visible under the pupal cuticle, or skin. The escape of an adult insect from the pupa cuticle is called eclosion. The cuticle splits and the adult then pulls itself out and clings to the remnant cuticle. When it first emerges, its abdomen is large and its wings are small and crumpled. The butterfly pumps hemolymph, or blood, from its body into its wings and the wings expand to full size over several minutes. During this time, the monarch discharges waste called meconium, that were produced during the pupal stage. The monarch hangs with its head up, allowing gravity to help the wings unfold. Monarchs, like many other insects, usually emerge in the morning. Female monarchs' veins are generally wider than males, and they have darker scales between the veins. Males are usually brighter orange than females and have thinner black wing veins. Male monarchs have a dark spot on the vein of each hind wing. This spot is made of specialized scales, called andraconial scales. And many close relatives of monarchs, these scales produce a chemical used during courtship called a pheromone. Pheromones do not, however, seem to be important in monarch courtship. The end of the female's abdomen is more rounded than the male's and has a small notch on the lower side. The claspers on the end of the male's abdomen help them hold on to the female during mating. Adult monarchs in the spring and summer breeding generations live for two to six weeks, while monarchs that migrate and overwinter can live for seven to nine months. Monarch larvae can only eat milkweeds, which are a subfamily of the dogbane family. There are over 100 species of milkweed in North America, many of which are rare. We will highlight three fairly abundant species. The most common milkweed eaten by monarch larvae in the northern U.S. is Asclepius syriaca, or common milkweed. This species is found throughout the northern U.S. and southern Canada. A common host plant in the southern U.S. is Asclepius asperula, or antelope horn milkweed. Asclepius verdisolata, or warled milkweed, grows on dry hillsides throughout the Midwestern U.S. Note its narrow leaves, but typical milkweed flowers. You should familiarize yourself with your local milkweed. To help you with this, our Milkweed, Monarchs, and More field guide has a whole section on milkweed. While monarch larvae can only eat milkweeds, monarch adults consume nectar from a variety of flowers. Even though adults do not grow in size, they must eat to get the energy they need to stay alive. Nectar, which is about 20% sugar, provides this energy. Monarchs store fat in their abdomens. This fat is critical to survival during the migration and overwintering period. The fat comes from two sources, food the monarchs ate as larvae, 
and sugar in the nectar that they consume as adults. As they migrate south, the butterflies stop to drink nectar and often gain weight during their trip. Now prepared for winter, this next section will discuss the migration and overwintering of monarchs.